RCI's iRacing Series number two, live here on RCI TV. From the world center of speed, Daytona International Speedway in Daytona Beach, Florida. Hello everybody and welcome, I'm Jesse Lee, joined by Ash Bibby, both on the cameras and on the comms a little bit this evening as well. And I do mean this evening, the lights ablaze here at Daytona International on the road course for round number two of IMSA racing season number two as well. Deuce is wild here tonight. Ash Bibby, how you doing? Welcome in. Hello there, Jesse Lee. I'm doing very well. Thank you very much. Uh, it's always lovely to be here, although most of the time you don't get to hear my sweet little voice. Sweet indeed. We're live on both YouTube and Twitch here tonight. Welcome in wherever you may be and wherever you are watching this evening. Jordan Daly out here as pictured here in the 197 car. Yeah, the Porsche, as it were, trying to maintain their top qualifying spot. Daytona Road Course doesn't really need any explanation and neither does this turn as it often ends in misery especially in a wet night like we're currently having today the temperature's not so bad it's 17.2 degrees centigrade so pretty mild all things considered we'll feel a little bit chilly with the rain coming down however but the puddles are the big problem here everybody out there on the wet tire for qualifying a little bit of the qualifying has already passed we've just passed the halfway mark in the short 10 minute session here tonight. Thomas has taken the top spot in GTP. The LMP2 category has Benjamin Heilman in first. Holland just goes P2. Herford Smith down to third for now. Makhmutov in the, uh, I guess we'll call it GTD category because that is what it is, the IMSA GTD category. We may call it GT3. It's uh, very subtle differences between the two, but looking like Makhmutov in front of that, uh, Strutsenko and Tikhanov, the top three in that class. Ash, the first time we attempted Daytona road course here on the IMSA championship, it was round one of season number one. You know, that broadcast, we had to, we had to put a polish on that one a little bit. Yeah, Jesse, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't my finest hour. Uh, in the booth. Well, don't, no, don't take the blame for that. <laughs> it's, uh, it was all a learning curve. Um, you got what you got, if I recall. We didn't have a timing tower at all. No, we were calling the race like it was 1967. And as fun as that was, it made me homesick for all my electronics and gadgets that we broadcasters have up here in the booth. And it does make you appreciate how hard it must have been to do proper commentary back in the day but there was PA public address announcers all the way back into the 40s and maybe uh, well beyond that as well but uh, basically you just read the car number and every now and then you get an update of where people are running that's what that broadcast was like but not tonight full timing tower and full broadcast suite in play Tomas continues to lead GTP Heilman and Strutsenko has gone top of the heap in GTD, a 54-290 in GTD, the quickest mark to beat, but less than a tenth behind them is Kupasinov in that Ferrari, BMW from Ferrari to Porsche, the top three brand parity there. All the LMP2s, of course, are Dallara's, Heilman's 141-475, just about two one hundredths quicker than Holland, and Thomas has the edge on Barton Machia by just over two tenths of a second. Final couple of minutes here in the qualifying session, less than two to go. These sessions have frequently been very fast pace. This weather is wreaking havoc as Tom Bryant driving for CLR has had their last hopes dashed here by virtue of going off the road there before they even make it to the horseshoe section of the racetrack. 
And Strutsenko has had an issue as well. At least that's what it appeared to have been, even if it was a minor one. As you see, the yellow number appears again for Strutsenko, your leader in GTD. And in fact, that BMW number 32 has returned back to the pit lane and they will take no further part in it. Billy Octane has had a similar incident out of P3 in the GTP category. And they have also returned to the pit lane. Now, why I'm bringing all of that up, of course, is because at this point, there's not enough time to get back out on the track, do an outlap, and have a lap tallied up, or one that would trouble the timing and scoring board, of course. So anybody making mistakes here, that will be the end of the qualifying. Not so for Jordan Daly, you'll recall, with about four and a half minutes left. They lost it in this very corner. They have since been able to get back out there on the racetrack. They will continue to go around. Thomas Macha, Octane, Daly, Sundstrom, Ingman, and Martins, the top seven in GTP. Ingman, the only car in the pit lane in that particular category. Strutsenko and Kapiusinov, they are both in the pit lane, or, or they were both in the pit lane, I should say, in GTD. And uh, one of them has come out of the pit lane, Strutsenko has, but that will be nothing more than a siding lap on their tires. Callum Carrigan's joined us in the YouTube chat and has reiterated a common issue that we are quite privy to uh, rather unfortunately as qualifying has officially ended that in the wet there's not much difference between the gtp and an lmp2 car here today we certainly saw that in season one where the lmp2 field ash was right in the back half of the gtp cars yeah the wet weather does kind of create a little bit of mayhem uh, on the track, the LMP2s do catch right up to the back end of the GTP field uh, as the GTP really struggle to maintain the high lap times that they do on a dry track. Uh, the GT3s are just steady away, sorry, the GTDs, as it is in iRacing, are steady away as always. Um, looking forward to an exciting race here tonight, Jesse. Certainly are. We went over the qualifiers in GTP. Tomas taking the top for that class of 40.971. Good enough for pole on a wet night here in Daytona Beach. Benjamin Heilman on pole in LMP2. Man, they had a rough season one. They qualified on pole. They ran up front a lot. But right up until the end, they just didn't have the thrill of victory, but they finally got it across the line in P1. But they're on pole here again tonight, a 41-475 over Holland, Pillbeam, Herford Smith, Edwards, Leonard, and Kampferger, your top seven cars there. And in GTD, Strutsenko with a 154-169. It's a nice time in the BMW, and that's put them on pole over Kupitsenov in the Ferrari as well. Ritani in third place. Tukhanov in fourth. Makhmudomov in fifth place. Bryant. Roskim. Meshkine. Oh my goodness. Uh, Mesher. Mesher Yakov. Excuse me. I couldn't. I, I got to put my glasses on. I'm Mesher glad you Yakov. Got to do that one. Yes, in eighth place. No, I, th that was literally me not being able to read that. I'm getting very old in Coco in p9 and as they start their siding lap quickly we'll take a look at how race one ended up and by virtue of that the championship standings starting off with the gtp category bart macho won the race over sunstrom bullwinkle and billy octane and daily your top five in that class for round number one on to the lmp2s Benjamin Heilman has already taken victory over Kamferger and Marcelino in third, Herford Smith and Holland, the top five in LMP2. And of course in GTD, Alexander Strutsenko winning that category over Mac, Mac excuse me, Mac Mutov in the, that class. Oh yeah, they're both in the race today. I was just checking that. Kapitsinov in third place. Tikhanov in green fourth. Roskam is your top five 
in GTD. Still a lot of racing to go, but we have gone green in the GTP field. Tomas leads them into turn number one. Octane and Daly find it out over P number two as they all come together in that turn number one. A little bit of a slide there from Macha back in fourth place, but no harm, no foul. They all get single file and get away cleanly. We expect this rain to be a constant issue here tonight and it will be an issue that the drivers will have to navigate. Getting on this wet grass is tantamount to completely taking yourself out of the race as you will slide for absolute ages. Ingman has thrown up a caution flag in the back of this group, but I suspect that's just because they dipped a tire off the grass. No real harm or foul there. Mikel Martin's doing the exact same there. Heilman's been able to hold on to the lead in LMP2. Strutsenko's done the same in GTD. Let's check it out. The first couple of corners, very action-packed. Let's see what we have for replay here. This is Miguel Martins, and this might have been just more than touching the grass, and in fact it was looping the car around. The GTP car is most uncomfortable when it's in the wet and loaded up in a corner. So that's what happened to Miguel Martins. Bart Macha had a wiggle, but was it something a bit more unfortunate? Oh, it was. That wiggle that we saw was him recovering the race car. Here we have Coco, and this was off the very start of the races, the back half of the GTD at all. That's not on at all. Looks like Roskim has deposed of Coco for eighth place. That was the bus stop, I'm pretty sure, from that angle. And that has put Coco back where they started. Back in ninth place, and they were going for a spot there, and it... Uh, did not come off at all. That's going to draw some harsh words from some of the drivers, you would have to imagine. Tomas is out to a roaring start in GTP. Nearly six seconds of our timing can be believed. Six seconds out in front of the field. And oh, Strutsenko and Radiani has had an incident. Surely they have in GTD. Oh and, they, oh, and the accident still hasn't cleared. Here is what happened. This is for the lead in GTD. The leader spins out. Absolutely nowhere to go was Radiani. Tikhanov goes through. And I believe Tikhanov is now your leader in that category. They've gone from third to first. A mistake by our leader there has taken them all the way back to last in their class. They couldn't get that BMW back the right way round. Mesher Yakov has just had an incident in the Ferrari. Mesher Yakov, everybody having issues navigating this wet condition. This is a little bit wetter than qualifying was. It was drying out a little bit, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. And that was even a bit better than what I was referencing earlier on. That was mostly asphalt and concrete, that ride to the wall, but that car clearly damaged. I wouldn't, uh, I would imagine the connecting rods in that car after hitting the wall like that are, are messed up and the rear end housing is not, you can actually see it right there. It's wiggling. That typically tells you as a, as a driver and a, an engineer that that car, the rear end is not hooked up as we say, meaning that the entire rear axle is just sort of dangling there. It's rocking back and forth a little bit. And that will require a pit stop to fix that car. Being told that Camperger has found themselves in a spot of bother in the LMP2 category as well. Oh, yep. Just go straight off now. What he's trying to do is stop it. Oh, oh, that was super close for Camperger. Oh, and another car. I think that's a, is that a, is that an LM? No, that's a, I can't tell. That's Miguel Martins. Okay, so I was going to say, I can't tell if that was a GTP or not from that angle, but that was indeed a GTP. That was the GTP of Miguel Martins, the number 62 Cadillac. Tikhanov, Tikhanov has had an incident in GTD. Radiani has taken over the lead in the GTD category as we watch Kamperger have another slide and spin as well. It is a hectic day 
or night, should I say, here at Daytona. Here is ticking off. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, so a prototype goes off the road there. That brings Tikhanov off the racetrack. Radiani goes through. Mutov goes through. Tom Bryant goes through. Tom Bryant in the Mercedes, the only one we have in the field, up to P3. I believe we're going to see an aftermath here. Remember, Miguel Martins has already had a couple of issues here, and he's going to have one here as well. I was talking to some of the drivers last season about these GTP cars. They are quite difficult to handle in the wet, and setting them up in this weather condition is sort of something of nightmares. Because you've got to get a, a car that handles quite well at high speed so you don't lose and hemorrhage time on these high banks of Daytona. But you've also got a car, you need to have a car that can brake appropriately. And sometimes those two, oftentimes I would argue, those two things are not conducive to each other. Well, a fraught couple of minutes here has led us to the complexion of the race that we have currently. Gallum Kerrigan saying that this has, seems like it's very tough. It is indeed for the reasons and more. I've definitely undersold how difficult it is to drive a GTP car in these conditions at these speeds. We are all live, and this is the state of the race for the lead. Billy Octane has assumed the lead in GTP over Sundstrom. Sundstrom in the darker colored car here going for the pass. They're going to be neck and neck at the line. That would have been a beautiful photo finish, though we still have 53 minutes of racing left. Trying to go around the outside here is Sundstrom, given just enough room by Octane there, and they're going to have to settle it here, and they do. Octane surrenders, goes back into P2. The Estonian driver knows when to cut and run. These, this, that's a Swede versus an Estonian driver. I can't imagine the last time we will have seen two northern countries racing each other that ferociously, but well done on all accounts. No contact and good driving there. Sees Mikhail Sundstrom's nearly on pace Acura into the lead of the race over Billy Octane's Porsche. Bart Machinel coming back into the fray in a Cadillac for Connection Lost Racing. Oh, a little bit wide here. Oh, they've both gone wide. Everybody going wide in the corner. Billy Octane, near disaster. Huge slam into the wall there was Tomas. One car completely off as well. Was that Jordan Daly? It was. It's chaos. Chaos corner here at Daytona now. That was nearly the entire GTP field off as if somebody had put oil down on the racetrack. I doubt that was the case. Miguel Martins has gone off. Tomas, who qualified on pole, who was leading the race. Both Martins and Tomas in the pit lane. That is a toe to pit lane. Everybody piling in. Tomas hard into the wall. That's what caused them. That's Jordan Daly going back to turn number one. The big U-turn. Honey, I think we missed our exit. Miguel Martins, who recently towed to pit lane after their early troubles, has said, well, that was not fun at all. It doesn't look fun. It looks absolutely treacherous out there. One of the few times I am happy to be here in the cozy, warm, and dry, more importantly, broadcasting booth. At the A, oh, they're just going to get a little bit of the grass here in the 69 Cadillac. That wasn't a very nice spin, but it's nice that they were able to miss everything. Now, look at this. It's going to take a Herculean effort to get that car back to the racetrack, the wet grass. But they will be able to do it. And now some of the prototypes, of course, most of the prototypes catching the GTD field that has also calmed down. Alex Pilbeam is your leader in LMP2. They have taken the lead from Benjamin Heilman. Heilman down to fourth. Herford Smith's in second. 
Ted Edwards up into third place in LNP2 now. Blackwood recovered from that absolute massacre that just happened in, in Death Corner. Should we, it should be renamed. That's definitely Death Corner, Jesse. Yeah, it certainly is, Ash. You couldn't have said it better. And that was uh, very, very unusual. I have never seen anything quite like that. The only time I've ever experienced an incident that just never, that just refused to stop happening was uh, whenever, back in the old days in uh, racing sims where you could actually put oil down on the racetrack and you'd spin off in it. So, um I say old days, like that's not a thing that could potentially happen these days, but uh, little incidents like that, but uh, never in a online racing experience have I seen anything quite like that. Kind of reminded me of, uh, of Mario Kart. I, I thought the race leader had chucked out the red shells. Yeah, it was so strange. All the drivers just went wide. Sunstrom got away with it. They're still leading over Macha. Macha probably came off better than anyone else. I felt like Sunstrom was a little too deep into the corner. I don't know if there's a puddle or something down there that has that was keeping drivers from you know turning into the corner because it just looks like they're going straight on. But Octane. I would say Octane got the worst of it, but I think the reality is Tomas is the one that got the absolute word of that. It's back into the wall and into the garage. Both Tomas Martins out of the race. Mesher Yakov in the Ferrari, remember their incident, the GTD car, they're, they've come to pit lane. They fixed the rear end of that car, but they are two laps down, but they have not given up. Here's Ingman. Oh, just goes a little bit wide there. Huge crash for Ingman in fourth place. Down to fifth now. And that was a huge crash. I, I guess they, I don't, again, that looked awkward. I imagine some hydroplaning or aquaplaning, depending on what continent you're from. Because you wouldn't normally drive more left than that. And here we are, a, several different classes of cars. CLR on HWT here. Now, that'll be a conversation after the race. You can bet on that. Ted Edwards and don't know if that was Tom Bryant. That might have been Tom Bryant. More cars coming down pit lane. A lot of these cars with damage. But, yeah, that is Tom Bryant. So, yeah, just a horrible situation to be in if you're Tom Bryant. Not a whole lot you could do about that. Remember, this car was in third place a few moments ago, and now they find themselves all the way down in eighth. And they were in a rock and hard place. They were getting split by two LMP2 cars. And it's all come undone. Ted Edwards has now retired from the race out of LMP2. Billy Octane, who was leading the race, who was second earlier on, was involved in that really big incident, has now locked up and driven off the racetrack into the wall. Martins, who we're going to see a replay here for us, chimed in and said the Cadillac is so bad at low speed. I appreciate that info. That I, I sort of theorized that based on the season's worth of data that we have and the feedback, but we appreciate the confirmation that at low speed the Cadillac is uh, unwieldy. So, Damas and Miguel Martins. They did not, they have not retired from this race. Billy Octane's come to pit lane as well. They have not retired from this race. They had lengthy repairs after the tow did to Moffs and Martin. So if I erroneously refer to them as DNF, they have not. And even if they do leave, they are allowed to come back and continue. There'll be many laps down, of course. They are currently about five or six laps down. That's not the point. Ted Edwards, I believe, is also not retired. Yeah, 
the rain in our racing compared to what we're kind of used to in ACC two completely different things in ACC the, 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 the racing line is still the line to take uh, just a little bit more uh, gingerly however here in our racing if you put a toe on the racing line with the wet disaster disaster works for you Jesse yeah, you're dodging puddles, you're trying to manage your braking, and keep in mind some of these cars do not have ABS. And the GTP cars are so powerful that any sort of torquing up of the rear wheels in these things could lead to absolute disaster. You're going so fast anyway, and you're trying to be precise. It's just there's so much going on. You dip a tire, like you say, and you're gone as well. It's it's almost like playing the, uh, when you were a kid, you played the floor is lava, remember that? It's a little bit like that in some sense. Bacchier has had a, some sort of incident. They've been able to recover whatever it may have been. You're right on board. Uh, Cap yourself in fifth place. Now, I think this car's about back to where they started. It sort of calmed down in this category a little bit. Radiani leads in their Porsche, the number 29. For Mahmudov. Vikanov in third place. Roskam in fourth. Vesinov in fifth. As I do believe, I'm trying to look down pit lane, trying to give my best estimation here. I don't think anyone's actually retired. There's been many incidents afforded. It's hard to keep, uh, keep track. The 69. Artir is towed back to the pit lane, and this is why. Going deep into the horseshoe, and it's a spin. I wonder why that would instigate a tow. It's definitely all. There might be a secondary. This is the LR car. Cadillac squeaks through here, but that wasn't it. So that was the prelude but not actually what sent them down the pit lane. Oh, he's wiggling the car about there. He's trying to get a handle on it, but oh, no, it's gone again. He knows something's wrong with it, and that will be the nail in the coffin. That requires a tow. Bart Macha has just towed back to the pit lane out of third place. The connection loss 404 Cadillac has returned to the pit lane. Third place in GTP. They have the quickest lap of the race, a 40.690. So now we, in theory, will only have two cars on the lead lap. Here's what happened to the 404. Just gets a little bit wide there. Standing water. Can't do anything about it. And hard into the safer barrier. Well, it's safer for you to hit it if you're a driver. It's no safer if you're a car. Dale Sundstrom has had a spot of bother here trying to work GTD traffic. Oh, and he's going to lock up. It's a big lock up. Does he make it to the wall? No, he doesn't. Safe. Safe is Mikhail Sundstrom. Nearly on pace, nearly out of room, but he saves it. And that would have left just Jordan Daly as the only other car on the lead lap. Daly, for all of his incidents, for, for driving the kids to and from school and back earlier on in this race, Daly has not done too terribly bad. To be completely fair, uh, in P2, he's less than 10 seconds back. He's actually worked on the lead a little bit. Sundstrom's incident there probably helped quite a bit. That will not help Sundstrom's tires. That Acura will not appreciate the damage because even though they're on wet weather tires, obviously, and that's still not great for the tire compound. That will still flat spot and create issues. It's even worse, by the way the uninitiated. It's even worse in the wet with a flat spotted tire, if you can believe that. Racing here, this is the 197. That is not the leader, Mikhail Sundstrom, in front of them. It is a LMP2 car, but it's traffic you've got to navigate. It's the third place car of Benjamin Heilman. Now on any other day, these two are likely to be teammates today, operating independent of one another. Heilman, who is as low as sixth place, Earlier on, it's made their way all the way back up to third now. Bill B. Orford Smith. 
the first and second place car. And here's the onboard from Jordan Daly, P2 and GTP. This is what you're working on. A little bit of contact there, the CLR car with the, I believe that's a Ferrari. Mr. Yakov, perhaps. Could be Coupe Sinyov as well. Either way, contact there since the CLR car wide. And that's just, that's every lap stuff here at a racetrack like this, especially at this stage in the race, where you have cars of all different classes mingling and you've got to be on it. But the problem with that is with the rain, there's so much spray, it sort of deafens your senses a little bit. Oh, was that the CLR car into the wall? It was a CLR car. It wasn't the one I thought it was, but it is Tom Bryant. A huge, lazy slide. Nope, that was the other CLR car. Tom Bryant spun out, but you can see there's another CLR car escaping into the distance in NASCAR 3 and 4. So there were two... There were two CLRs backwards in this corner. Here's the other one. I thought it was an LMP2. It's not. So, yeah, this is what I saw in the background. That's a huge tap. And, uh, yeah, both CLR cars, same corner. Folks, I think we can all agree this has been a rough race. The inky blackness of night starting to fade away a little bit. And the purples, pinks, and yellows of morning birthing here at Daytona International. As Ash Bibby makes fun of my accent, next time we'll make fun of yours. Oh, my accent, I believe Jesse. Ingman Blank has... Lancashire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you mean Lincolnshire. <laughs> that's We're a, not gonna that's an inside tonight, joke. That, Jesse. That's an inside joke that only we get. Uh, I saw... Ingman, who's not laughing at all, Ingman is having a, a mare of a race. That Acura has returned to the pit lane again. And this is what happened to the 848 Acura. I'm going to assume a lockup. No, just a wiggle there. Oh, my goodness. Dukes of Hazard style through the horseshoe and all the way into the wall. And that is what's taken Ingman back to the pit lane. That was a very scary moment. Mr. Yakov spinning around there. You can see the standing water where it's pooling and it is wreaking havoc here on a lot of these cars and teams. Let's reset you. Mikhail Sundstrom leads Jordan Daly in GTP Pilby and Herford Smith are the top two cars in LMP2, but Benjamin Heilman's coming in that class, not too far behind. Radiani and Makhmutov, the top two in GTD with Roskam some 12 seconds behind them. Roskam's got bigger issues though. Ikonov right behind Roskam for third in that category. They're all told so far, only a couple of cars in GTP off the pace because they've all had issues. Several cars two laps down. One car three laps down, or two cars three laps down. And that will likely change quite quickly. Ingman has DNF, but that doesn't really mean anything. Ingman might have had a moment there and in frustration, but they're still allowed to rejoin. They can rejoin the race at any time and pick up where they left off. Jordan Daly is in and out of pit lane. Was wondering why that gap was so large. Well, that's why. In and out of pit lane is Daly, P2. In LMP2, or excuse me, GTP. I said that because it rhymed. It wasn't true. It did rhyme, but it was true. So it's a it's forfeit. Only two cars in the GT D category have come to pit lane, but those are 
both due to incident. Now, it'll be interesting to see how far they go. GTD typically can go longer, but in this weather, fuel economy shouldn't really be a problem. You're going nowhere near as fast. You burn less fuel. So we'll be curious to see where everybody comes in. The majority of GTP has come in, and that is out of necessity for the most part after incidents. Miguel Martins, of course, now has DNF. And cars continue to slide. Rupe Sinyov. Rupe Sinov sliding around down the banking, trying to get it back going, gassing it up, sliding around again, struggling for grip. Also probably perplexed by the progressive banking there. The apron here is is usually flat, but sometimes it isn't completely flat. Quite a confusing concept, and if you get on two different bank angles there and try to gas the car up, obviously your tires are not making any traction, not that they would be anyway in this weather. Ted Edwards cannot figure out, cannot figure out the horseshoe here. car was P3 a little while ago and has fallen back quite considerably. Doesn't appear like anybody has survived the conditions here tonight, Jesse. I'm pretty sure every car on the track tonight has had some issue or some sort of incident in, in almost every corner. The only car that I can tell you for sure hasn't is Alex Pilbeam. Uh, perhaps Her Her uh, Herford Smith as well. Uh, Radiani may be on a technicality, that leading GTD car, because they didn't get involved in an incident. They had to stop to avoid an incident, but they weren't actually involved. They just sort of drove around the incident, so to speak, and inherited the lead. So maybe those three cars, uh, but even still, there's no telling if they've driven off the track. We just don't know it at some point. It's that rough. Here's the yeah, onboard cam of Pillbeam, the lead LMP2 car. And this shows you the state of the racetrack. The sun may be coming up, but it's only illustrating the difficulty that the driver's been dealing with. No real run in line. The rain's coming down too hard. I mean, there's a... There's a, there's a line where they're running, of course, and that will be inherently less wet. But it's not that that's the problem. It's when you get to these slow parts of the racetrack, like here, look at the lights. Anything the light shines off of. See that on the inside of the racetrack right there, where he's having to drive right now to overtake these cars. See all that shiny part? That, obviously, is standing water. That's a problem. If you hit that at all, you're putting yourself at risk, but you don't have much of a choice. If you're overtaking cars and you have to overtake cars because you're in a faster class. So you're worrying about hitting the shiny parts of the racetrack. And if you hit them wrong, if you dip a tire off into the wet grass, it is away you go. And through this section though, it looks a lot better. The track condition, as long as you stay on the line, the rain no longer coming down here and this looks a lot better. This is an almost instant improvement from from what we had been seeing earlier on when, in the downpour of race start. The weather conditions look, do look to be slightly improving. Looks like it might still be raining on the back straight, which is a thing that can happen in iRacing. The weather is progressive like it is in real life, so it's very possible that on the the pit straight, the start finish line area, it's not raining, but when you get a mile and a half or so away, which is where the back straight is, it could still be raining a bit in turns uh, NASCAR three and four as well. But as you progress a mile or two down the road, it could vary, or 1.2 kilometers for the European crowd. Um, it could end up not raining. I do see several of the cars turning on and off their windscreen windscreen wipers at certain intervals and it's not just for spray i thought it might have been but pill beam was not in traffic and he turned his back on when he went through nascar too so that tells me that maybe for the time being some of the parts are 
more waterlogged than others, but this is definitely an improvement. As she, you can see the road, it's not dry, certainly not, but it's not flooded or uh, clogged in any way. The incidents are becoming a little bit more spread out uh, as we're just about to go into a year three play of the number 616. I'm definitely not going to embarrass myself and try and give you some names. Why not? I do. <laughs> he Mac did Mac manage Mutoff to save that car the tire barrier. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him a save. He saved it as the leader overall goes by. He saved it, does Mac Mutoff out of the wall. I don't think he got into it, but you got as close as you possibly could in that Lamborghini. Something's happened to Camperger again. They've been sort of quiet recently. Oh, and he tries to keep it out of the back of Ted Edwards with whom he was racing, and he does a really good job of that to his own detriment. That's a sporting race car driver right there, you know. Uh, less sporting driver might have just uh, used him up a little bit there, uh, but he did not. Uh, all respects to Camferger in the 46 car. Ted Edwards will be breathing a sigh of relief here after that anxious moment. Surely felt like he was going to receive a punt there, but didn't. like Holland's going to make their way around Camperger now as they try to regain their confidence. That's the other problem with having incidents in a race like this is it knocks your confidence a little bit and that shows up on the lap time more than anything else and Holland who looks like they're a little bit more dialed in they have driven right by them. Holland back up into the top five. Camperger down to sixth place. But I'm pretty sure when the 46 regains their confidence here in a lap or so, they'll get right back up there because keep in mind, 46 did catch the eight. Uh, something's happened to Hereford Smith. Nope, nothing's happened to Hereford Smith, except that they have elected now is the right time to come down pit lane. There is no way you're putting anything on these cars other than more wet weather tires. This track is in no state to do anything else. kidding no you're not kidding coco has done that they're the only car that's done that of the many cars that have pitted camperger goes for a spin or oh, a little well, i wouldn't call it a spin necessarily a wild ride in the very same corner that they did a lap ago but you're absolutely right ash coco has put dry tires on the tire graphic on the right side of the scoring pylon if it's blue that is a wet weather tire if it's white that is the dry compound And I wouldn't have believed we, we would ever see that. But here he is. Here is Coco on the dry tires. And this is a, when I say this is a little bit too early, I mean it's way too early. Looks like he's struggling just to accelerate in a straight line. Certainly is. That's a problem. You, could, the, the, you can turn the traction control in these cars all the way up, and it still won't be enough because... You're on a you're on a tire with no no grooves in it. It doesn't dissipate water, so stopping is still a problem. Stopping in a straight line is a problem, and I wonder if any of these drivers coming up to Coco know they probably think because I've been in this experience. I've had this experience here at Daytona before. You, a car jumps a little bit too early and it goes to the wrong compound. You come up on them, Ash. It looks like they're having a mechanical problem. It looks like the rear end's not hooked up or they've got some kind of aero damage or they're dragging something. You don't you don't see anything in this. It just looks odd, but you don't naturally jump to, oh, they're on slicks. You assume that there's a mechanical problem. That's why they're driving like that. But in reality, I mean, this stuff like this happens. Somebody was going to try it. I didn't expect it to be this soon, however, but I think this might be a failure on the experiment scale and I'd be curious to see if they don't jump down pit lane again here and put the wet tires back on yeah very curious decision from coco uh the amount of standing water that's that's still on the track is 
they're yeah, not going to stop. Alvaro they're not going to stop. He's... Coco's trying to get down pit lane, but they're not going to make it. They try to break on the wet part of the surface, and they're going to come to a crashing, screeching halt here after pit lane has finished, and they're going to stop just short of the start-finish line. And unfortunately, Ash, I'm sorry to cut you off. You're going to have to do another lap now. Yeah, it's, uh, it was struggling trying to get down pit lane. The car did not want to turn. The brakes could not check up in time. Uh, and, and again, now he's, he's going to have to see if he can nurse, nurse that car around one more time uh, and actually make it down pit lane, Jesse. Scary moments there. And unfortunately, something I illustrated moments ago, that's a problem. Um, I hate to talk about something and it immediately be demonstrated, but that's exactly what I was talking about. Um, the, the stopping in a straight line is the problem. All Coco did, the only crime they committed was trying something different, but the only crime they really committed was trying to turn slightly left. They didn't pull it hard left. They just turned it slightly left and it was gone because uh, when you don't have wet weather uh, tires on when you do that, it's just, just, it's just gone again. And that was just being a little bit too far out to the edge. Hopefully they'll be able to, oh, they've stopped for more cars. Well done. And now once it is clear, they will continue on their way. The rain's all but stopped here. Puddles abound everywhere. But a drier run in line has formed here on the racetrack. Sundstrom. Still leads daily. Mikhail Sundstrom for nearly on pace. Still the only car in GTP that hasn't pitted. Ingman, Othier, and Martins have all DNF'd out of that category. Everyone else still going. Only two cars in the LMP2 category have not stopped. Pillbeam and Camfriger. Everybody else has done, including second place Benjamin Heilman. All those cars on... Uh, on the wet tire, of course. Radiani has driven away. Makmutov in the GTD category over Roskam. Strutsenko has caught Roskam for the third place position. None of those cars, including Tikhanov, have pitted. Six on back have done. We suspect Coco is going to come back into pit lane again here. And they are and they will make it down to pit lane speed this time. Folks, if you're watching this broadcast and you enjoy it, we invite you to like, subscribe, and follow the various channels that you're in. We appreciate it, and it helps us with things like visibility and uh, also, of course, uh, ads and all that jazz as well. So we appreciate you liking, subscribing. It helps pay the bills around here. And we appreciate all of you for doing so. We, oh, it's going to be a smack into the wall for Coupe Senov. And that will lead to an apparent DNF for that race car. But it, backwards is the 37 of Leonard, or Leonard, sorry. We're going to continue to show you some of these little spins as we do the spiel. Thank you for, it. it's 52 100 we gained an, an additional 10 or 12 followers in the last week and a half not followers subscribers over on youtube we appreciate that and we appreciate your follows over on twitch as well if you're interested in getting involved in racing here at rci tv we promise not every race is chaotic as this this is certainly an outlier but if you like to get involved in i racing wrc acc and more all you need to do is join us at racerci.com, R-A-C-E-R-C-I.com. From there, join the Discord, get involved in a race today. We have different skill groups and classes for you. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner or an eSports pro. We've got a category for you to be competitive in, competitive in and enjoy today. Of course, uh, unlike most other championships, you don't miss the opportunity to race simply because you missed round number one. You have to sign up mid-season for all of our active championships. That includes the iRacing IMSA Season 2, which you're currently watching here. 
but all of the ACC championships as well, including the Friday Champ GT2 Season 2, Round 2, Deuces Wild again, coming up tomorrow evening in the same time and place. Uh, still time, too, to get involved in the World Tour 2024. RCI's Endurance Racing Championship, round two of that series, the 12 hours of Paul Ricard, I believe it is, Ash, this coming weekend. Yeah, world tour this weekend, 12 hours of, of Paul Ricard. I can't think of anything, uh, anything more entertaining to do with that Saturday. Oh, that's right, I'm working, Jesse. Well, that didn't sound like you were miserable at all, Ash, uh, on that one. you have any further comment? You're just going to leave it there. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it right there. Who would not enjoy selling car parts on a Saturday afternoon? Mm, well, different strokes for different folks, I suppose. Jordan Daly in and out of the pit lane. Getting a little bit of a breathing room there from the LMP2 car. Ash, thanks for joining us on the comms with me here today. And uh, beyond that, uh, we're going to bring in a familiar voice for you here. Dan Van Zutva has joined us in the commentary box for the latter half of this race. Dan, I don't know if you've seen it, but it has been crazy. We've seen cars go off left, right, and center. The rain was almost torrential at the start of the race. It's now stopped. The sun is coming up. The incidents have been limited since then, but this has been a very tricky venue so far. I opened up YouTube. I saw RCI iRacing in the rain, and I already told you guys I love iRacing in the rain. Not only because rain is challenging, but it brings chaos, as Jesse is describing. And uh, especially with a more drying up track, I can only imagine, as we saw some struggles going into pit lane a few laps earlier for a GTE car, uh, there will only be probably some more chaos as it's drying up, uh, especially when everyone, if, if, it's, if, if it can be done, if taking dry tires, you know, you can take a little bit uh, an off route on the wet line and you spin around again. So, um, yeah, happy to be here. Yeah, I think that's what's likely here. I don't think anyone's going to be pitting for dry tires, even if it does get to that point. You're just not going to have, we have 17 and a half minutes left. I don't think it's going to get to the point where it, I mean, even if it does get to the point, I don't think there'll be enough time left to make it viable to come back down pit lane again with the speed you run around here. So everybody will be, if it does get dry enough, which it still isn't, you can tell how dry it actually is. You can see the water we're riding off the fender of the 716. That's McMutah P2 in their GTD category. You can see the left front wheel of the Lamborghini. Mm. It's 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 still, I wouldn't say that's even spinning. It's gushing water off of the tires as it's trying to disperse it. And the road doesn't look that bad, but when you see it coming off the tire, you realize how wet that is. It is nowhere near time for six. What you would typically want to do is wait for that to show almost nothing and be the first one to get on them. But again, with 16, 17 minutes left, it's not likely that that's going to happen. The windscreen wiper on there because of the spray from the prototype car, or cars, I should say. And you can see it turns off whenever there's not a car spraying them because it is no longer raining and clouds have gone away. It's a peaceful morning here, albeit a bit hectic. Yeah, indeed, it, it, and, and, and it's still morning, you know, if it was clear midday, you know, it could dry up possibly a little bit quicker, uh, therefore, um, of course, the dry tires could be picked, but it's still morning, it's probably still a cold Daytona International Speedway outside uh, as well, so, um, yeah, again, uh, dry tires aren't likely, and as you mentioned, the spray of uh, not only the GTP cars, but the GTE cars as well is absolutely huge. So I think you're correct, and uh, the dry tires will probably remain in pit lane for uh, the remainder of the 15 minutes race we still have going on. And uh, I can see P1 having quite the gap since Trump. I don't know if he still needs to pit Jesse, but he looks to be on for a dominant victory here at Daytona. He certainly does, and while you were talking, something happened to Mikhail Sundstrom. That car was off the racetrack, and they lost a lot of time. Ooh. They're going to go off again. Actually, no. 
This is the replay. That is what happened. Sorry, I didn't see the cut there. Normally, I'm pretty good at picking up the cut. I thought that was live images, but no, that was the replay of Mikael Sundstrom just going wide. And yes, Dan, he has to come down pit lane. He hadn't done a stop yet. One of the only cars to have not done that. The only car in GTP to have not done that. And the leader in the pit lane. Here's P2. This is Jordan Daly. And they're on the back straight here. They've got the bus stop chicane to deal with. And perhaps a bit more intently, Daly's got the HWT LMP2 to deal with here. He'll go very wide up on the racetrack. He's trying to take, uh, uh, you're trying to take all the rain there, it seems, because of course you have a dry line, but you have wet tires. So possibly that's, that's uh, because, uh, well, if you have uh, wet tires that are dry they don't have a lot of grip uh, and possibly avoiding some dirty air in uh, going into oh, the corner, oh it's happening possibly. it's happening was that Mikhail Sundstrom coming out of the pit lane they have a shorter radius on the outside or excuse me on the inside does Sundstrom and he might have just beat him out but I think he has done yes. he has Mikhail Sundstrom it was real close but the tighter inside radius of pit lane Bales Mikhail out just a little bit. Jordan Daly, though, prior to their pit stops, that was a 10-second gap. And with 14 minutes to go, it's less than six now. Yeah, indeed. And don't forget, Sundstrom did make that mistake, which probably cost him about roughly a few seconds. And so Jordan Daly really is close up to the back. So these new tires, if Sundstrom took new tires, still need to get up to temperature probably a little bit. And in the wet, that's easier said than done of course so Sunstrom is really at a disadvantage here however the gap is still 5.3 seconds and so Sunstrom could potentially just easily drive away but we need uh, to see that uh, in the future of course Sunstrom he really got saved by that later pit stop because as we know uh, all these GTP cars don't have to really take new tires they just need to get in pit lane for fuel and as a result because Sunstrom uh, pitted later than Jordan Daly. He didn't have to take a lot of fuel in, and that's why he got saved by a few seconds margin. Five and a half seconds the gap there. Mesher Yakov gone off of the racetrack. Just about another slide from one of the Ferraris and waits his turn as they were too wide off of the corner. Everybody else able to get away cleanly. Strutsinko has put on dry tires on that BMW. Hmm, interesting. Yep, that's the second car in GTD to try that. Coco tried it about 10 minutes ago and had to come in to put the wet tires on. Strutsinko now on the dries. You can see yeah. the Michelin banding on it. You have to be really careful uh, because as I mentioned again, if you go a little bit offline, you hit a water patch, then you're done. Uh, especially in iRacing, there's no coming back from that. Uh, you either miss pit lane, demonstrated by Coco, or you go straight into the wall and lock up and uh, possibly, well, end your whole race. However, Sustrenko, he is in P5, really almost nothing to lose currently. P6 is 1 minute and 33 seconds back. P4 is 84 seconds ahead, so you might as well go for it try it if it doesn't pay off which it almost doesn't do just avoids the grass there on the outside gets overtaken by another gtd that is the mercedes of tom bryant currently in p7 um unlapping himself potentially from strensko but again as he almost demonstrated if you go a little bit off line your uh, race could end in tears yeah it really can and that that's sort of Unfortunately, illustrated by Shretsenko right there, or Shretsenko, sorry. Uh, they drove a little bit too deep. They got on the wet part of the racetrack, and there's absolutely nothing they can do. You can almost manage it on the run-in line at this point. But if you deviate, it becomes a big problem. Ted Edwards off again as they regroup. We'll see what happened then. This is not a usual spot where he's had issues but it is Ooh. where all the gtps went off earlier on in the race and ted edwards dropping the kids off to school is going to do a u-turn <laughs> and get to the office 
Yeah, and it's really an easy mistake you can do it, especially because the line, uh, even on the dry track, is uh, is so narrow there. So, especially in the wet here at Daytona and in these iRacing rain physics as well, I've experienced themselves at Sebring. You really need to be uh, precise, millimeters uh, precise, otherwise you can really lose it. Uh, that Edwards is doing a good job to keep that LMP2 out of the wall. Uh, also easier uh, done um, uh, in the wet. So uh, that Edwards just saved it by uh, by a few meters. And it's going again into T1. A race 9 minutes and 40 seconds to go as the sun is still rising here at Daytona. Uh, PBM currently leading uh, the LMP2 class on a uh, marginal lead, 21.8 seconds, so well done by him. Of course, he's not taking the victory yet, and in the rain, everything can happen. But, uh, well, as we can see, the challenge of um, uh, a drying track is uh, still continuing. Yeah, it sure is. That HW team, very interesting story. They recently took their first big victories in sim racing. They've won races before, don't get me wrong, but I'm talking about in iRacing. We're talking about years of trying the big events that iRacing puts on, and they've come close to winning things before. They've had absolutely uh, just devastating finishes to some of the races that have taken them out of contention in the past, but they put it together for Sebring this year they won two different races with two different sets of drivers on the same day after years of trying and failing to achieve it just once they got two big victories in one day yeah it's amazing and uh, as you say it can take really long i've been into the iris since to myself for a year now and um, in a 24-hour race, a 12-hour race, you can really do something wrong and it can only cost you 10 or maybe 12 seconds. And even though an endurance racing race is long, it can already be enough to maybe get off the podium or just to not take a victory. And then I've not even included the uh, possible mistakes of ending your race. So um, good for them. Uh, congratulations for them because it's uh, really a motivator as well also for the team. Yeah, Pillbeam will be thrilled with his wins in the official Sebring ra races. You'll also be thrilled about the way this has gone as well. They've just sort of kept their nose clean. And I mean that quite literally in a race like today where so many noses have fallen off and they've driven away. Billy Octane in a spot of bother as well. They're going to drop off the podium in GTP to Moss, who started on pole in the GTP category, back up to third. Octane, who led and ran second and third, now down to fourth and just in front of this driver, Bart Macha for connection lost. Racing, and that's interesting. Oh, Billy Octane driving completely off of the racetrack there. I think more than anything signaling to Macha that there's something wrong there and did not want to even make it close. There certainly mm. is something wrong with the number 33 car. And could it be a mechanical issue? Looks possibly to have taken a hit. I, think I don't know if I'm seeing. Yeah. Yes. He the, the, smacked the, the wall. Yeah, the front. Surely. Yeah, the, the, yes, indeed, the left front is uh, is not that uh, healthy looking. Uh, we mm. might get a race replay on it soon, but uh, in his Porsches, in his GTPs, as we see a race replay, possibly just outbreak himself, get on the wedge pad, yep. lock up, and oh. uh, yeah, that's really, really painful. And such an easy mistake to make as well on the wedge, Jesse. It really is, and we've seen that time and time again there in that particular corner getting back onto the NASCAR banking and NASCAR 2 where cars just going off. You mentioned it, Dan, that's hard in the dry. You wheel hop, you walk up there in the dry and in the wet, you don't, you walk up, but you don't stop. You keep going because of the water, of course. But Octane down to fifth place. They'll repair the car in the pit lane. Mark Macha back up to fourth. Port connection lost and nearly on pace, continuing to be nearly a winner here today. It was five and a half seconds to gap first and second back to Daly. It's now just about back up to 10 seconds. Sundstrom has reaffirmed 
the quickest lap of the race, a 40.267. Octane, in the pit lane, quite interestingly, has put on the dry tire. Now, that's a science experiment, but I'm curious what the results are going to be, because if Sundstrom, their quick time is a 40.26, what may Octane be able to do here at the end of the race? I still say it's a little bit too wet for that, but for, 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 for argument's sake, I'm quite interested to see what the time might be. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's trying, you know, he has no fear dropping a position compared to Eggman. Uh, he's DNFs, of course, he's practically last, as we see another GTP, that's uh, P8. Uh, ooh, spinning, oh. spinning on the wet line, can't get off the wet line, and uh, round he goes. Oh, and another GTD joins him and oh. collides. Oh, that's interesting. That was the BMW of, I think that was Strutstrenko, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that was interesting, and indeed it was the number 32 BMW gets round as well, can't save it, and the Ferrari is coming up to his right, he accelerates, Ferrari doesn't see him oh. either, both in his blind spot, and collide. Mr. Yakov and Shretsenko both on the dry weather compound tire, that would explain why they both struggled with that corner, it's been heartbreak and heartburn for everybody thus far today in that corner and especially on the dry tire now it is a bit of a bother again it's almost like the start of the race where on the wets it wasn't even enough oh. coco has gone around they're sitting on the inside of the horseshoe there waiting for the traffic to clear before they get back going they have an opening and a gap now and I, oh my goodness ooh. now that was very now how do they end up in the infield are they turning wow. left and backing up they are and i i, I don't <laughs> I guess they just didn't want to go to where the tires were and they used the rolling momentum of that car to end up in the infield. They rejoined without any issue, but that was a huge snap right there that caused that. Yeah, indeed, but it was an even finer save, uh, to be honest, because he could have easily... It looked smooth, he, right? Yes, it looked really smooth. He could have easily uh, did not steer and put himself into the wall and the race is done, but he kept himself collected and turned to the infield somehow. I don't know if I could have managed to do that. And uh, no damage taken. So <laughs> he only lost some time. It's not a, not a position, I think. So, um, brought us some uh, great entertainment as well. Yeah, I just, I, that looked incredibly smooth to my eye. We may get two more laps out of this race. Sunstrom across the stripe this time. We certainly will. Two laps to go this time by. As and Sunstrom just needs to hang on as Daly lingering about nine to ten seconds back. Mikhail Sunstrom could be his own worst enemy here. A couple of near misses today, but they've held it. But one mistake here, one genuine mistake, and we all know what could possibly happen. It could be all over. So Sundstrom needs to drive as sensibly as possible, knowing that Daly is within arm's length, but keeping him so for the duration. Bill Beam has done a whale of a job today in LMP2 once they settled out has never relinquished the lead. Radiani had to avoid some incidents themselves and has driven back to the front of that class. All deserving, as long as they make it, all deserving winners in my book. It, yeah, indeed, we can uh, we can see the gaps. 23 seconds, 20 seconds, 11 seconds. As you see, a little uh, that's Octane currently in pit lane, still repairing his damages. He will stay P5 as uh, down to P6 is damaged. We can see Thomas also coming into pit lane. Why that is is a bit unclear. They're not possible? Fighting no, they're possibly they're... Uh, dry tires or maybe. What's going on here? I mean, I mean, they're not fighting anybody. They've got two no. laps to Octane behind. They yes. know that they're not going to catch this driver, Bart Macha, for CLR in the uh, CLR Cadillac. So why not come in, try something, get get some data? Because you never know. It may rain at some other point in this championship. This is only yes. round two after all. Or something's wrong with that car that we don't know, you know. So there's always that possibility as well. It can also be. indicators still blue. It can also be fuel splash and dash. Um, We've seen that possibly. before, haven't we, Dan? 
Yeah, of of course. I mean, it's always uh, and he does, doesn't really have anything to lose. Uh, of course, ooh, that's a GTT car going really off the track, saving himself, needing to return to the other part of the racetrack. Racetrack, so makes a U-turn, and that's a huge off, but no damage collected by the Ferrari driver of, uh, I think that's the Polish driver in the number 158. Um, so um, that's uh, D root of Daytona showed right there. This is Cam Prager. Oh, losing it, losing oh. it into the wall Ooh. and sustaining a little bit of damage. However, I don't think he will lose a position because P7 has a DNF on his name. Uh, but uh, a lot of cars not keeping it collected in these uh, end stages of the race, Jesse. Certainly not. I was going to say, Mesher Yakov, who had that huge run there, he was doing a YouTube tutorial how to improve your lap time at Daytona with this one simple trick. Marshalls hate him. And that's just not to take the horseshoe section of the racetrack, but you're able to keep it going the right way. And here comes Mikhail Sundstrom. The clock has expired, and this is the end of the race they're coming to. Nearly on pace, they have made great strides in iRacing as of late. A great team with an excellent history. And Mikhail Sundstrom comes to the line and wins it here at Daytona. Deservingly so, uh, got, uh, did a little bit of a mistake at the end, but then drove away from Jordan Daly, who will also finish in second place. Uh, in second place indeed, followed by the 404 of uh, Mattia. Well, he will need to, to uh, do another half a lap or so as the GTD needs to get out of his way. Spins as well, that's again the 158 Ferrari. Um, but he will come home in third place and that's really well done. As we see that the other GTP of uh, Thomas also lapping on a, that's a replay. Again, spins around the Ferrari driver need, needing to collect him Himself. Don't put your car in your barriers, uh, needing to reverse as well. And uh, he will also finish once he completed his lap and uh, doesn't spin no more. But a uh, very deserving victory there by uh, Sundstrom. We can see the first of the LMP2s have finished as well, if I'm correct. And so Ted Edwards is also coming down the line, now overtaking probably his last GDD. Congratulations to Sundstrom, but congratulations to Pillbeam as well. They weathered the storm, quite literally emerged the leader in their number four or 242 Delara and have won a great victory here today for HWT. They have built on what they've started at Sebring and they have continued their winning ways. Congratulations to them and Radiani. We didn't talk a lot about the GTD driver in the Porsche, the number 29, but they have won it in GTD and in brilliant fashion as well. They kept their car out of trouble. They had been afforded many difficulties in doing so, admittedly, but great driving by Radiani has won them the day in their class. So starting from GTP, Sundstrom, Daly, and Macha, the top three in LMP2, Pillbeam, Heilman, and Holland, your podium spots there. And in GTD, Radiani, McMutov, and Roskam, right at the end, your three podium drivers in GTD. And that caps off a anxiety-ridden, frustrating, but enthralling edition of IMSA Road Racing here on RCI TV. What a, I, I, it's gonna take me a few days to fully appreciate and unpack what happened here, Dan. And it's the most important thing, keeping your nose clean throughout uh, the whole race, given any condition on the track, given any challenge presented to you on the track. If it's, uh, if it's rain, if it's uh, a car in front of you who makes an accident, um, it's really all those things combined. If you can avoid it, just keep yourself collected with, of course, the needed pace, but still avoid all the incidents. Prove yourself as a driver who can do that and uh, you'll almost be guaranteed a podium spot or a win, possibly in this case, for one of those three winners today. And uh, as you say, that's the beauty of great IMSA racing. Well, Tom Bryant's joined us to talk about his day. He said the car was doing a lot of wacky things it didn't do in heavier rain. So it was very interesting. And thanks for the broadcast. Thank you for participating and specifically 
for setting up the event. The event manager for iRacing is Tom Bryan, of course. Hey, if you like that, we got more racing for you nearly every day of the week. You can sign up at any time for any of our championships, including the iRacing IMSA Season 2 Championship that you are enjoying right now. Going to Spot Franker Shop next week. That race not broadcasted live here on RCI TV, but we will be back in two weeks for the Sebring round, round number four. And we're going to try our best to bring you the finale from Le Mans in France in about a month or two's time. Not just iRacing here, though. Of course, ACC Racing on the docket as well. The 12 hour of Nürburgring, the Nordschleife is live and you have your choice between anything really. GT3, GT2, cup cars, which are the touring cars, of course. Uh, oh, excuse me, touring car is the touring car. Cup cars are the Porsche cup car, etc., and so forth, and GT4. So anything you like at the 12 hour of the Nürburgring, Nordschleife, you're going to want to get involved with that. That race happens on the 27th of April. A lot of time to get signed up with your team and get some practice in. Team Jag versus Team V12 was announced. That championship starts at the end of April as well. Only the Jag or the Aston V12. That, of course, also an ACC. And you can join any of our other champs as well. The Friday GT2 season just underway. We'll be back live for round number two from Watkins Glen tomorrow evening sign up and meet us on the track we'd love to have you midweek masters is about to wrap up in one week's time that's been a interesting and competitive series and of course on saturday world tour 2024 continues round number one at paul ricard the 12 hours will bring you the first four and the last four hours of that race live here dan van zutfa final thoughts well, it's been a really good race, hasn't it? I've joined you guys for uh, about uh, 20 uh, minutes and uh, I can't wait for Sebring. I'm crossing my fingers that it's a rain race as well uh, because we've seen in the past that uh, that delivers some great action. Great action here nonetheless and I'm excited for iRacing and the T Daytona to return on RCI very soon. Big thanks, of course, to all our partners that make this race and every race possible, a.k.a. Esports, Driver61, Fanatec, DigitalMotorsport.com, and Go Setups. For more on those brands and how they help us, you can visit our website, RaceRCI.com. Get involved today, and we appreciate you for clicking the links. It helps us with things like server cost in the future when you do it. And a big thank you to your subscriptions, your follows, all of that for these broadcasts. We'll be back with you tomorrow night for ACC GT2 action in the World Tour on Saturday. On behalf of everybody here at RCI, I've been Jesse Lee, joined by Dan Van Zutfa and Ash Bibby today. We appreciate you watching. We hope you have a wonderful evening. Until next time, have a good night.